Hi, I'm Tom from Heroic Labs, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to set up a Nakama server project using Go. Before we begin, let's run through the steps we're going to take to set up our Nakama project. First, we'll download and install the Go binaries to allow us to run Go commands from a terminal. Second, we'll initialize our Go project and set up our dependencies using Go mod. Next, we'll write a bootstrapper file, which will be our Nakama server's entry point. After that, we'll implement a simple health check RPC so that we can validate our servers running correctly. We'll then write a docker file and docker-compose.yaml file that will let us spin up and tear down our server with ease. And finally, we'll run our server using docker and verify it's all working using the Nakama console. Okay, to start, let's open up a browser and head on over to golang.org forward slash dl. Here, you'll see a list of downloads for Go. Select the appropriate one for your platform. In my case, I'll choose Windows. Once that's done, launch the installer and follow the installation wizard to install Go. With Go installed, it's time to create our project. Let's open up a terminal window and create a new folder for our project. Let's change into our new project folder and initialize a Go module using the go mod init command. This command requires a module path argument. This module path typically takes the form of a URL so in this case, I'll call it heroiclabs.com slash go setup demo. Let's run that command now. If we inspect our directory now, you'll see that go has created a go.mod file for us. Taking a look at the contents of this file, you can see that we have a module with our specified module path, as well as a declaration which states which version of go we're using. In this case, go 1.16. With our go.mod file created, Let's grab the Nakama common package by running go get github.com slash heroic labs slash Nakama common slash runtime. Now that we have the Nakama runtime package, we're ready to begin creating our bootstrapper. We'll start by creating a new file called main.go and open it in VS code. You can of course use any other editor that you prefer. Let's add our package declaration. We're going to import a few different packages here. These being context, database slash SQL, time, and finally, the Nakama common slash runtime. Okay, so let's save this file. Before we forget, now's a good time to go back to our terminal and run go mod vendor. This will vendor our Go packages, placing a copy of them in our project root under a vendor folder. If you're using VS Code, you should now get some nice auto-completion too. With those packages imported, we can write our init module function. This is the function that Nakama server will call to bootstrap our module. It's worth pointing out at this point that what we're effectively creating here is a Go plugin that the Nakama server will load upon initialization. We'll start by defining our init module function, which has several arguments. These being a context, which contains server information, such as runtime environment variables and other info. A logger, which we can use to add various entries into the server logs, such as debugs, warnings, and errors. A database object, which can be used to interact with the connected database the Nakama server framework interface used to call various Nakama related functions such as creating matches, adding leaderboards, etc. And finally, an initializer which allows us to register RPCs, hooks and callback functions. It's also worth mentioning that the return type for this function is error. So if all goes well, we simply return nil to indicate that it ran successfully. To begin, the only thing we're going to do in this function is log out how long it took to load. To do this, we'll first create a variable called init start and assign it a value of time.now. Then we'll call the logger.info function and log out how long it took to run everything between declaring the init start variable and running this logger.info line. Of course, that's not going to be very long in this case, but as your server module grows, this can be a useful metric to know. We'll get the elapsed time by running time.since init start dot milliseconds. Finally, we'll return nil to indicate this function ran successfully. With our bootstrapper ready, let's implement a health check RPC that simply returns a success payload back to the user. This will show you how to register RPCs or remote procedure calls that can be called by the client that can execute and then pass back a payload to the user. Let's create a new file called healthcheck.go. We'll specify that it also lives in package main and we'll import the same packages we used in the bootstrapper, with the exception of the time package. However, we'll also add the encoding slash JSON package to allow us to turn our payload object into a JSON string. 
Before we write our RPC health check function, let's define our response struct. Next, we'll write our RPC health check function. This function will take a context, a logger, the database object, Nakama module, and a string payload. It will also return both a string payload and optionally an error. First, we'll add a debug log entry to say this RPC was called. Then, we'll create a response object using our health check response struct. We'll give the success property a value of true. Now, let's convert that into a byte array using the JSON marshaller. We'll also ensure that if any errors are encountered during the marshal process, we'll log them out to the server logs and return an error. Finally, we'll return the response as a JSON string. With that done, let's head back into the main.go file and register the health check RPC with the initializer. We'll give it an ID of health check as the first parameter and pass in the RPC health check function as the second parameter. If the register RPC call returns an error, we'll return that here too. Now that we have our bootstrapper and health check RPC implemented, it's time to get our Docker file, Docker compose.yaml, and local.yaml files set up so that we can spit up the Nakama server and test that it's all working. First, let's create the local.yaml file. This file provides configuration parameters to the Nakama server. There are a whole host of different parameters you can configure in this file. But for now, let's keep it simple and just configure the logger level to be debug. If you want to learn more about what parameters can be configured, I'll leave a link to the server configuration documentation in the description. Now, let's create a new file called Dockerfile. This is the file that Docker will read in order to build our Nakama image. If you're unfamiliar with Docker, I highly recommend you check out the official Docker documentation and have a read up on what it is and how it works. It's a rather large topic, but it makes spinning up a Nakama server a breeze. The first thing we're going to do in the Docker file is create an intermediary image that will build our Go code and compile it into a shared object. To do this, we'll start by defining our base image and some Go specific environment variables. Next, we'll set our working directory and copy across our local Go files. Now we'll run the go build command to build our shared object file. Now that we've built our shared object, we can create our Nakama image and copy it across. It's worth mentioning here that the version of the Nakama plugin builder must match the version of Nakama that you're intending to use. This is because the version of Go used to build the shared object must also match the version of Go used to build Nakama itself. Ensuring the versions of these two images match will ensure that Go versions are compatible. With our Docker file ready, it's time to add our docker compose.yaml file. This file serves as a configuration file for the docker compose command, which will allow us to spin up an instance of the Nakama server as well as the Postgres database in a single command. The docker compose.yaml file is quite involved, and for the purposes of this video, we'll copy a pre made one from an existing repo. I'll leave a link in the description to the Nakama project template repository where you can find the ready made docker compose.yaml file. With our configuration files added, we're ready to run the server using Docker. Let's fire up a terminal and browse to our project folder. Now type docker compose up. This will begin downloading and building our Docker images before spinning up our Nakama and Postgres containers. Okay, we can see that our Nakama server has started successfully. Nice. To test that our custom Go server runtime module is working, let's open a browser and head to 127.0.0.1 colon 7351. This will open the Nakama console. We can log in with the default credentials, which are admin and password. And once we're here, let's first open the account section and select the default user. We'll copy the user ID, then head over to the API Explorer section. Here, we'll select our health check RPC from the dropdown, paste in the default user's ID, and click Send Request. You can see that our health check RPC is working correctly and has returned a success true JSON object. Perfect. Let's wrap up by running through what we did. We downloaded and installed the Go toolchain, then initialized our Go project using the Go commands Go mod init and Go mod vendor. Next, we wrote our modules bootstrapper, which serves as the entry point. Then we wrote our health check RPC and registered it in the bootstrapper. We then added our local.yaml, docker file, and docker compose.yaml configuration files. Once done, 
we ran our server using the docker compose op command and verified our server and our PC was working using the Nakama console. That's it for this video. You'll find all the links to the appropriate documentation and further reading in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.